So round two, because round one was me streaming to myself in an unlisted video. But now I think we got it and this should be public. All right, we good. We good, got the confirmation. All right, everybody. So I've got a very special stream for you today. You might be somebody who was like me until today and doesn't know much about a very important man named Julian Assange. I watched a documentary about him today. It was created by a long-term vegan and guy I've known a long time named Kim, Kim Staten. And this documentary is absolutely mind-blowing. It is powerful and shocking and saddening, deeply saddening, disturbing. It is um, a really powerful documentary that I think everybody needs to see because I think people need to understand what kind of world that we really live in and how things really work here. Quit Eating Animal says, what's up? And the real thing's back again, what's up? So guys, we are gonna be watching a three and a half minute trailer for the documentary, which is called The Trustful. And then we'll be joined by the director of the documentary, Kim. So it's gonna be crazy. So guys, before I start, make sure, can I, can you hear me? Yesterday I was talking to myself for about a minute. Uh, you guys can hear me and everything's all good. Let's go, thanks for the shout out. Oh, you can hear me then. All right, so we're good to go. So guys, first of all, just let me know. Have you heard of Julian Assange before? Do you know much about his story? Have you deep dived on this at all? Let me know. <clears throat> I hadn't at all, I very vaguely heard about him, heard something about what he'd done, but I really had almost no idea. And um, I'm very glad that I found out more today. I'm very glad to know about what has happened here and what's going on. And there was actually a big update today, so that's interesting. Um, yeah, interesting timing, actually. And I'm sure that Kim will be able to give us more, shed some more light on all that as well. So the real thing said, yeah, I've been following him for years. Wow, that's amazing. Like, I'm shocked I didn't know more about this guy. I, I can't believe it. I guess I just was focused on other things, you know? Um, JB Cole, what's up from France? How you doing, mate? And Mia said profits, yeah. Sort of, but we are about to learn. You are about to learn, and I guarantee you are gonna be shocked, and it's gonna be heavy. It's gonna be heavy, but you're gonna be really glad you learned about this guy. He's a fucking legend. All right, so we're about to learn together right now. Yeah, it's beautiful. All right. So we're going to just watch the trailer. And then after that, we'll get the director of the documentary on. All right, we ready to roll? Any trigger alerts? Actually, I don't know. I haven't seen this trailer. I would say the trigger alert is if you're triggered by corruption, you should probably look away. Yo, Redlocks, yeah, I'm back to back streaming. I am an official streamer. So, what's up again? All right, so yeah, trigger alerts that. There's, in the actual documentary, there's a little bit of um, horrible violence, but I doubt that's probably in the YouTube trailer here, maybe just a portion. Um, yeah, very sad, this shit. But all right, good to learn about, and we're about to do that right this second. Let's go. This is generally the view of people, oh, we don't know much about Assange. But you should know, because whether you know it or not, he is fighting for you. For your courage and leadership and tenacity in journalism and publishing. Since 2010, Assange has been held in progressively narrower, darker, colder and crueler spaces. He has been detained since the 7th of December 2010 in one form or another. And we are now here after years of imprisonment. WikiLeaks is a non-state hostile intelligence service. 
I think the man is a high-tech terrorist. A high-tech terrorist. The traitor, a treasonous. He has to answer for what he has done. Assange faces up to 175 years in prison for publishing classified documents exposing U.S. war crimes. The U.S. government narrative about Julian is a complete fraud. It is a complete fraud from A to Z. Julian took on the most powerful countries in the world, basically all of them. We now have confirmed that there were plans to kidnap Julian here in the center of London or even assassinate him. No one who instigated that illegal and immoral war has been brought to justice. But the great truth teller sits behind bars. If wars can be started by lies, peace can be started by truth. Julian Assange is a hero. What if everything we thought we knew about somebody was a lie? Would we be willing to go on a new journey of understanding? This is a story of deception, lies, bravery, and a man who risked everything to bring the truth to light. Mr. Assange shows all the symptoms that are typical for a person that has been exposed to psychological torture over a long period of time. He looked at me intensely and said, I hate to say this. He then hesitated, visibly troubled and searching for words, and then he finally said, please, save my life. May future generations have the ability to speak without restraint. May our children and their children know truth and have access to information that leads to justice. Wherever Julian goes, free speech goes with him. If there is a bird that is about to take flight, stretch her wings and rule the skies. May it be a peace dot and no longer a bald eagle. If you think Assange is a traitor, he's a rapist, he's a narcissist, he's a hacker, I don't blame you because you have been deceived. And if you think you've not been deceived, that's normal because otherwise it wouldn't be deception. Julian Assange, ladies and gentlemen. So that gives you some idea. Yo, what's up, Allison? That gives you some idea, but it's a pretty vague explanation of what has actually happened, of course, you know? And I would highly recommend everybody to watch this documentary. It was so informative and um, yeah, a massive eye-opener. Even though, you know, you know that there's levels of corruption and things like that, it was, a huge eye-opener to just see the relentlessness of the um, attack on this guy. But anyway, I um, I will get the director on now because we're going to have a much better conversation with him involved. And let's see if I can do that. Yeah, Alison, it's a very interesting story. You should definitely watch The Trust Fall. Um, Kim will tell us all about how to do that soon. All right, so give me a minute here, guys. Yo, Kim, what's up? Hey, James, how are you? I'm good, brother. Let's just make sure everybody can hear you. Um, can you talk again, mate? Yep. Yep, how's that? Every Everybody can hear Kim fine? <clears throat> Live technology. Let's find out. Yeah, all good, sweet. Dude. Um, great to see you, my man. It's been ages. And um, the last time that I was around and seeing what you were up to, you were heavily into promoting documentaries. You had a whole thing in Sydney. You were running the Sydney Vegan Club. How long have you been vegan for, first of all? 
12 years. 12 years, right. And um, you were running the Sydney Vegan Club just around the time that I went vegan about 10 years ago. And you started doing these documentary nights. I think it was twice a week, twice a week, right? Yeah, at the beginning. Well, once, once a week at the beginning. Once a, once a week. And you were doing documentaries at least once a week called um, Films for Change. You were sharing documentaries that can help uh, influence change in the world, positive change in the world. And um, they got very popular and you guys did such an amazing job. And I didn't know you had um, branched out into creating this documentary. I assume it's taken quite some time. And um, I also had no idea of your um, interest in the topic. So I'm first of all stoked to see you, man. Stoked to, like, congratulations on putting such an amazing tribute to this man and what he's done and you know getting a lot of information out there for the world to see and discuss amazing job dude amazing documentary like it was it was so well done you know it was just line after line it just followed so well and was engaging the whole time shocking and yeah man it was a job very well done so congrats to you yeah so why don't you start by telling us how you got interested in julian and what what that process was like for you yeah sure well in 2010 i was um, sitting in the living room watching the news and the video popped up on the news which was um, depicting the murder of 12 people on a street corner in baghdad during the baghdad uh, so during the Iraq war and uh, it was just a very short video but it was shocking and it, and it stuck in my mind and uh, it was years later before um, I understood what that was about and uh, it's now known as the collateral murder video and what it was depicting was um, the, the camera footage was from the, the gun of a Apache helicopter a US helicopter uh, basically filming what they were doing and uh, what happened is that they uh, were they were watching people on the ground there was 12 men walking down the street two of them were suspected to be carrying guns but they were actually carrying cameras they were reuters journalists and uh, basically the helicopter proceeded to shoot them all down um, killing almost all of them except for one man who was uh, crawling around the ground uh, a van pulls up a father with two kids in the van to help the guy uh, as any decent person would and uh, in the act of trying to help the American helicopter then shoots that shoots up that van uh, and the, the two children are only um, survived because their father threw his body over the top of them so that was the incident it was the incident occurred in 2007 the, the footage came out was leaked with leaked by Bradley Manning now, now Chelsea uh, and then it became known as the collateral murder video when was it and shared was, after the incident how long later that, that was in 2010 and, and that's what kicked off all of the persecution of Assange is because he embarrassed the US through those big releases in that year collateral mm. murder was part of the Iraq war logs and then there was the Afghan war logs and then the diplomatic cables which undermined Hillary Clinton's campaign in the US election of that year where Trump got in and so all of that uh, big kerfuffle uh, through those releases which incredibly embarrassed the United States uh, government then led to that pursuit of Assange although although it's known that uh, that we have uh, U.S. government was going after it was was going after us on you know, well before that. So so mm. but that's what really accelerated that process of them um, pursuing him. Uh, and then here we are, you know, uh, 14 years later, and, and he's still being detained and still kept in prison. Um, but you know, for me, it was you know that it goes back to that that video. And then about eight years ago, I started exploring the issue. To say I was involved with sharing documentaries and so I was consuming a lot of documentaries on all different topics from uh, animal rights to veganism and through indigenous issues and in the environment and then uh, getting into politics and uh, you know I've never actually been someone that's 
so much in politics. I, I tend to say to people that I'm not really, I don't follow politics because I, I sick to me. You know, they're, they're all a bunch of liars and I don't like listening to them talk. And, you know, so this was a challenge for me to, to get into something that's highly political and very complex. Um, but the further I got into it, the more horrified I was at what they're doing to this man. And also, I was kind of, um, you know, I was embarrassed by my own ignorance of this issue, especially mm. being that the son uh, only, you know, seven years older than me and, and he's an Australian citizen and we probably passed each other on the street here and there, you know. Um, and, and so, you know, it was a combination of that feeling helpless and useless on the issue. I, I thought about making a documentary for some years. I've studied other people's documentaries. And then things just fell into place where I was finally in a position to make a documentary um, just due to the effects of the so-called pandemic which shut down all of our cinema screenings. We went into online streaming, films for change dot stream. And then uh, once that was sort of running smoothly, I, I finally found this spare time to, to consider making a documentary. So, you know, I picked a nice easy topic for the first doctor. You picked a big topic, bro. Uh, you came out swinging big time. Yeah, that video that you were talking about of the helicopter shooting at the crowd of people that had cameras, not AK-47s, and then again shooting at the van of a father and his kids who see some bodies on the ground, see a guy crawling around and are driving there and stop to try to help the guys and then they get open fired on as well and the dad died and the one of the son one of the son was in there. Um one of the son got shot as well, or he was injured. I don't know if he was shot, he was injured and it was horrible. The poor kid could barely you know, even discuss what had happened. He was a bit older, obviously, in the documentary. Um, horrible video, man. Like, just they're joking about it. They're laughing about it. They sound trigger happy. Um, it was just crazy, crazy to see that. And yeah, I can imagine that that being leaked is going to bother a lot of people. So let's back up a little bit because leaked, you know, who is this guy, Julian? A lot of people I think don't know. Um, gig is gig. That's just this dude in the chat, but a lot of people don't know Julian. So you already mentioned WikiLeaks. So as far as I understood, he is the creator of WikiLeaks. He's the uh, original guy who created the tech to make this option for people to leak classified documents, important documents, whistleblowers to upload their findings and share it anonymously to the world so people can have access to this important documents, correct? Yeah, that's right. So, you know, Assange is an absolute genius. He, he should be a national treasure. You know, Australia should celebrate people like Assange that can innovate and uh, make the world a better place. Um, so, you know, he, he went to the University of Melbourne as a mature age student. He um, had success as an encryption consultant. He was involved in the early days of the internet in Australia. Um, and he was a computer genius. You know, he was, uh, I guess, uh, as a teenager, he was, uh, you know, got into hacking, which is uh, tech, very technical thing, and that's kind of the origin of his hacker scene. Although he left that uh, behind a long, a long time before he started WikiLeaks, because they, they don't need that hack anymore. Now that now the news just hand, ends up in their Dropbox. Um, mm, but you know, awesome. so he had he had this background of computers, coding, and encryption. Uh, but I think his his lifelong mission has been to end corruption in the world and that's you know i, I was told this by a, a, a woman that i was in touch with on on facebook one day that met julian when he was eight years old and um because she was working working with his mother christina son they were working together and julian and her son were playing 
together and, and she asked Julian one day, what, what do you want to be when you grow up? And he said, I'm going to end corruption in the world. And he was what a his gangster. Old. What? He's, Whoa. He's Dude, he was thing. destined for it. That's so interesting. Exactly. What the He was hell? on a mission. And so, you know, From eight? And so what, what the exactly. Fuck? How do you even know corruption is at eight? I have no idea. It's, That's fascinating. It, you know, not into all the woo-woo spiritual stuff, but it, it seems like he was sort of incarnated to, to, to do this mission. What? Or... or Maybe something that he witnessed at a young age um, that, that put him on onto this mission. But he was certainly yeah. on a mission. And, you know, and so I also know he was inspired by Daniel Ellsberg, who is the legendary uh, Pentagon Papers Vietnam War whistleblower. And what he what he was aiming to do was to stop that from happening again. So that if a whistleblower had important information of the crimes of the powerful, it could be put out to the public out to the press without that risk of blow being found out to protect their community. Uh, and then thereby you're actually speeding up information. You're actually increasing the amount of information that you can access. And people could do it without getting in trouble, without being detected. Uh, that was his mission. So he created this encryption. It was a revolutionary invention uh, at the time. Now, now it's sort of commonplace. Kim, hold up a sec, bro, because your mic is just all of a sudden got super low, at least for me, I think for, yeah. Can you just try, just start off again where you were, mate? Yeah, can you hear me all right Yeah, that's now? better, that's better, yeah. I don't know what that's, but please go ahead. Not the strongest signal here, um, but uh -huh. yeah, so. No, that's perfect now. Uh, it was a brilliant innovation and it worked so well that just in a four year period from 2006 to 2010, they went from unknown to worldwide prominence to working with dozens of the top newspapers to putting out these huge releases onto the front page of uh, the New York Times and the Spiegel and Le Monde and all these top newspapers uh, that were collaborating with them to put out these important releases. And mm. that's when... Uh, the proverbial hit the fan and uh, the US came down on him to uh, to with a plot to destroy WikiLeaks and to destroy Assange, uh, undermine his character and basically take away the power of WikiLeaks to, to change the world. Okay, so then there's two things I want to talk about now. Let's talk about how they went about this and if the second thing, if they did have any impact in the power of WikiLeaks. But um, let's start with what this guy went through in terms of the attack from the people he embarrassed. Yeah, so there was a plan to destroy WikiLeaks and uh, Assange, which is revealed in a, a document by a firm called Stratfor. We go into this in, in the film, and so I won't go into too much detail <coughs> in, in interview but uh, but you know to summarize basically they had this plan to destroy from as early as 2008 the US had a task force of a hundred people on the job of let's get rid of WikiLeaks and Assange and the, 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 the plot was basically on many different fronts it was to drag him from country to country uh, put him through dozens of legal cases which is what we've seen happen in the last 14 years um, try to bankrupt him undermine his character and, and that was the big one that they started with which was you know let's let's make a list of what what can we pin on Julian to make him look like a bad guy mm -hmm. and you know anyone can think of the top you know four or five smears that you could do on somebody to make them uh, to completely ruin their reputation and they chose this this sex smear um, you know that, that he raped two women in Sweden um, the real story of that, and, and this myth still perpetuates around. We see it every day on our social. Media. Of course, once it's out there, that's the that's why it's so effective. Because even if it's not true, it doesn't matter. He's already got his name attached to it now, so his credibility is already permanently affected. Yeah, and that that just spreads around. And um, but you know, to summarise that again, there's more detail in the film. But a quick summary: two women. Uh, slept with Assange. Uh, they had unprotected sex when he visited Sweden in um, 
the year around around the year 20, uh, 2010. and uh, and then they af after that they uh, contacted Julian to ask him to get an STI test because they were concerned about that, and uh, he refused to do it, which was you know his fault, a, a mistake. He said he was too busy, and so because he didn't want to get the test, they went to the police to ask for help. They didn't go there to report anything other than that. And then somehow through some mm. magic trick, which I, I think is someone's going to reveal one day in a, a very lengthy documentary to uncover how this magical thing happened where suddenly this uh, request for help to get an SDI test turned into a rape allegation and then was over the front pages of all the newspapers right at the time that the US were trying to extradite him. So very mm. soft. Um, the whole intrigue there that needs to be explored. People have people have uncovered quite a lot on that. Uh, you know, links between at least one of the women to political parties and stuff like this. Mm. So I, I do think that's going to be uncovered um, before long. But but anyway, uh, in the end, um, the women, those two women, uh, were were shocked that 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 had happened. Um, they became victims of this because then. They take the they take the blame and the guilt for what happened for how it was concocted into something else. Uh, the Swedish government then was basically trying to get Assange to go over to Sweden to to be questioned on the allegations, and that was all designed to get him in custody to hand him over to the U.S. That was why he uh, took refuge in the Ecuadorian embassy in London uh, as a political uh, as a, as an asylum seeker to prevent the extradition. And, and that's another myth that gets smeared around that that, uh, that he was trying to hide from Sweden. Not the case at all. You know, he went to Sweden. He 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 was quite happy to be questioned over the allegations. Um, and so, in the end, the case was dropped for lack of evidence. There was never any charge. So he was never even charged for this. It was only ever an allegation of rumor. Yeah. Just a, and, uh, just a, like it was a case that was opened. Inquiries were made and there was nothing. Exactly. And we see people every day on our socials saying, he's a rapist. Like, don't, haven't people heard of innocent until proven guilty? Haven't people heard of, you know, defamation and smearing? So it's, it's really sad to see people uh, spread that around. Um, the case has been dropped. It was only an allegation. And uh, that's, that's all it is. And it's, it's over and done with. And it was designed to take the take away the focus of what was in the Dropbox, uh, what, what were the actual disclosures that WikiLeaks revealed to the world, and put the focus on to assignment uh, to, to mm. defile his character. Yeah, and, you know, that's just an excellent way to do it. But unfortunately, even, you know, Assange's character aside, it does, I mean, first of all, I, I think it makes sense what you're saying. Like, there was no charge ever, so guy's innocent if he wasn't innocent he would be charged if we have this justice system that we trust and obviously it's not always perfect but in this case we should assume he's innocent that's what the judge has found or that's that's it didn't even go to the judges I, I don't know but the point is it didn't go anywhere so there's no point in thinking just because the allegation was made in a very weird suspicious way um and people jumping to all these conclusions and and uh, crucifying the guy for something he w was accused of and not proven to have done. And then um, it doesn't change the fact, though, that what is being released on WikiLeaks has been released and all of these documents showing this war crimes and things like this, that's irrelevant of who Julian Assange is. But obviously they're trying to make an example of the guy. And you cover that a lot in your documentary that this is what happens. You know, unfortunately, they're sending a message with this guy that this is what happens if you expose us. You know, if you expose the crimes that they commit and things like that. And it is extremely concerning to see this guy rotting in jail, losing his mind in solitary confinement. A guy who, as you said, should be praised as a hero. And you know, I don't know if there's another side to this story. I've seen your documentary. That's all I know of the guy. But, um, you know, from, from my limited understanding, it's a, it's a case that a lot of people agree with everything you said in the documentary. There's 
tons of um, other speakers and people talking about it. That's what the whole documentary is, interviews with people who are educated on this topic. Yeah, and, well, there, uh, there, is another, there is another side to the story, and it's a side that is a narrative run by psychopaths. Yeah, I, I As you say, that. really got to the core of it there is that um, people need to look at what what is in these disclosures, even if you just look at a few of them, even if you just Google top 10 WikiLeaks releases, and what you find is uh, this is serious stuff, like it's war crimes, which I already uh, described, but um, they also released, uh, re revealed the uh, the torture of the um, captives, uh, prisoners in Guantanamo Bay. That's how we found out that Guantanamo was such a nasty place, that they were having, you know, people as young as 14 years old and as old as like uh, 92 or something being tortured, even though the US said we don't torture people. Um, so, you know, what WikiLeaks rele uh, revealed is so extensive, the corruption, you know, crimes against the environment, war crimes, crimes of corruption, uh, uh, Hillary Clinton re re uh, receiving millions in, uh, of funding from Saudi Arabia. Um, the Pizzagate scandal actually came out of the diplomatic cables that hold anyone that's been down that um, shocking rabbit hole. Um, if you haven't, you know, you need it. a lot of hours to, to unravel that one. And, uh, you know, just, uh, and so what they effectively did mm. was Sanjed him into, you know, someone that he's not. They, they've painted him as a traitor, mm. a criminal, uh, a rapist, um, anything that they could do. And, and they've been so effective with that. But if people just take five minutes and watch an interview with Assange, or even better, two hours watch this film. But five minutes of an interview, and you see someone completely different. You see someone who's very intelligent, gentle, intellectual, and compassionate. And that's what he's. That what he. That's what he is, and that's what he's always been. Mm -hmm. He's been someone that's trying to end corruption in the world, just like he said when he was eight years old. Mm -hmm. um, so, you no. Know, I've had some criticism from the Guardian and Financial Times really? reviewing the film saying that it's a, a partisan film, it's biased. Um, but this was uh, what I saw as appropriate. You know, there's a terrific quote, which is, uh, you know, along the lines of, if we stand on the side of, you know, if we stand on the fence, if we're neutral in, in the face of oppression, we're siding with the oppressors. And so as soon as I started researching this eight years ago, I realized that there was uh, an incredible, um, falsification in the way that Assange has been portrayed and when it came to making the film I, I made the decision that I'm going to give 52 seconds to his oppressors and two hours and seven minutes to his supporters and I thought that was entirely appropriate considering the, uh, the they're shopping. lucky they got that yeah you know and and that and that was appropriate because this is clearly a case of the transgression of somebody's human rights it's torture and mm. uh and, and and it's someone that has committed no crime he's just revealed the crime it's of just others. revenge he's guilty. Yeah. exactly ah oh, man yeah it's that's what i'm saying like it's so concerning to see a guy who you know i'm going to take your documentary at face value i found it very convincing and um as i said regardless of who he is, even though I, I feel, you know, comfortable saying he seems like exactly how you described a compassionate, gentle, very intelligent man. Aside, like, regardless of who he is, though, the facts are the facts about what's been released. And someone asked in the chat, that's all been fact checked, right? WikiLeaks and someone answered 100% fact checked. So it obviously it makes so much sense that he would be a target um, to be made an example of and to have the revenge that these people probably crave. And all he's done is share corruption, you know, what any good person should do. He has given a voice to the victims of corruption and war crimes, violence, suffering, and he yeah, should be seen as a hero. He should be seen as a hero because it's a very dangerous thing to do something like that as we can see 
And he knew that going yeah. into it. Obviously, he's not an idiot. So he knew that this could have massive consequences, probably would have massive consequences. Maybe even he expected pretty much exactly to be exactly where he's at right now. Wouldn't surprise me. I would expect something similar if I was the guy. And yeah. um, he chose to do it anyway. So that is not a person that we should be remembering in any negative light. He should be an inspiration to us. And yeah, well, this is what the yeah. US has, has played upon is that we have this sort of bias where we, we judge someone on even their appearance, even their gray hair, or uh, that they're a, a tall, skinny, nerdy sort of character. And that can distract us from the what is the work that someone has done. Indeed. You know, with superficial people that can just look at someone's externals and judge them on that and decide whether they're um, worth respect, you know, and, and so they've played on that. And, and you still hear people like when I was interviewed on Talk TV in London, the guy, I don't know his name, sitting on my left, the video's up on YouTube, Talk TV. He, he, the only thing he had to say was like, I really don't like Assange. And I just wanted to jump out and say, well, who cares? I don't care what you think of him. No, no one cares, mate. Like, it's not about it's his personality. It's so exactly. irrelevant. So beyond him. Um, that was the whole point. You know, and it's so childish to think that somebody's appearance or their, you know, their, their mannerisms or yeah. stuff like that could get in the way of looking at the work that someone's done. Uh, it's, yeah, it's, the it's work crazy. he's done for us, for people like exactly. that person talking shit. You know, it's crazy. Nah, it's really sad, man. I, I was very moved multiple times, like, you know, to the point of, uh, yeah, feeling very, very sad for the guy. You know, he's clearly been through hell, you know. They've intended him to go through hell and they've succeeded. There's so much power behind the badges and, the, you know, those people high up that can make shit happen and control so much. And that's why he's in a filthy looking place right now, you know, a very depressing and uncomfortable existence. Uh, and he deserves to be living like a king, basically. So um, Philip just said he doesn't know who he is. So just to recap, Julian Assange is the creator of WikiLeaks. WikiLeaks is an organization or a, a website that gives people the opportunity such as whistleblowers and um, high-ranking officials perhaps to share information that can be about corruption or um, different important information that people want to share anonymously. And once there were some war crimes shared through WikiLeaks, the revenge that the governments, governments decided to take was to basically destroy his life through smear campaigns and also imprisoning him in house arrest and now in a jail. You know, he had kids. He doesn't um, barely ever get to see his kids, it looks like, and he's missing out on their entire life. And, you know, he just, yeah, he's, he's being treated like he's a, a, he's in a maximum security prison. You know, he's been treated like he is a terrorist, really. Psychological um, torture. And yes, he's Australian, you know, Kim and I are Australian and I don't even know much about this guy. I'm Australian. So yeah, it's also shocking that I know there's been information out there about him. I guess I've just never, you know, there's a lot going on in this world and um, he's another very interesting and important story to know. And I'm really glad I know now, but anyway, um, so, okay. So that covers the first question. The second question was, have, did this impact WikiLeaks? Did this impact his life's work? Um, do you mean like does WikiLeaks still operate? Is it? Yeah. Well, what you said was that their goal was to try to take yeah. down Wiki uh, WikiLeaks in some way. Was has has this campaign against Julian had any impact on on his work? What he created there? Well, yes and no. So the the library still exists. This incredible re rebel library of Alexandria the 10 million documents that are on the web Whoa. for anyone to see, they exist. Uh, that's part of his brilliant invention was to protect that, that library. And so, you know, they have 
safeguarded it. Um, it even when it, it's constantly brought down, the website gets hacked, uh, you know, at under attack, and it just pops up again because there's multiple oh. copies all over the world and there's multiple servers. So they can't, unless they bring down the internet, they can't seem to bring down the WikiLeaks library. Mm -hmm. um, so that's there. The organization is still operating. Uh, the only reason they don't put out leaks any at, at the moment, not for a few years, is because all of their time and money and resources is uh, geared, uh, is used currently to, to get their founder free. Really? Whoa. So in a way, it has affected the work. It has affected the work because they haven't posted anything for a few years. Damn, that's sad to hear, man. So yeah, they're, yeah. They're, so we interviewed Kristen Raffinson in the WikiLeaks office in London. Mm. So yeah, it's very much still operational. It, it was incredibly undermined. You know, you, um, there was a banking blockade. It was the first time that all these major credit card companies had united to uh, debank somebody. That was a, mm. a historic and uh, terrible thing for them to do. And even Julian's personal bank account was closed. And they, that's how they. They survived by going moving to Bitcoin, um, but you know nowadays they, they they got all that back, so they still have all these sources of uh, donations, and people can support WikiLeaks, and uh, they're cool. still running. And uh, with Kristen Raffinson, the Icelandic journalist uh, at the helm, the current editor in chief. Wow, um, that's fascinating, man. And you, I am sure, were. Uh, up to date with what happened today with, for Julian? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. I mean, would you, would you say that that's a fair next step to talk about? Is there sort of something yeah, in between yeah. we're missing? Yeah, pretty fair next step. All right, go for it. Um, if you could share yeah, what. Yeah, whatever you like. Yeah, cool. Yeah, well, look, this, this extradition hearing, this whole show trial has been going on for years now. Uh, the U.S., exercising this incredible extraterritorial overreach to come along and pluck a citizen from London, a citizen of Australia, under a US law, you know, to just basically say to their allies in, in, in the UK and in Australia, we want this guy, give him to us, even though the UK has this extradition treaty that doesn't allow political prisoners to be extradited. They try to pretend that he's not a political prisoner. What on earth is he then? Um, and so this trial's been going on for years. It's cost them a lot of money, and uh, it's just appeal after appeal, and it's an ongoing process. It's all part of the plot to, to undermine and destroy uh, Assange and WikiLeaks to bankrupt them. But you know, thanks to supporters, they can still keep fighting it. Mm -hmm. um, and so, uh, back six, five, six weeks ago was supposed to be the decision was supposed to be handed down as to whether they would hear another appeal or whether he would be extradited immediately. Uh, we we went over for that. We, we were out the front of the court and joined the protests and, and so on. And uh, there was no decision made. They, they basically delayed it for mm. as long as they liked. It's like, do whatever they like. And so then it took another five weeks um, for them to supposedly make the decision that was last night. Australia time. Uh, again, they've delayed it. Um, they've provided this uh, sort of another complicated step for the US. Um, basically, what they want the US to do in the next three weeks is to provide an assurance that they won't execute Julian Assange. If he's uh, taken to the US and tried, that they're not going to give him the death penalty. Uh, and then they also have to given assurance that he will have free speech protections, that he won't be discriminated against because he's an Australian, because they have shown an indication mm. that they would do that. Um, Interesting. It's like he's not an American. So it doesn't so, have the same rights. Uh, you don't have the First Amendment rights. And so the UK judges have said that the US has to give those assurances within the next three weeks. If they don't give those assurances, Assange will be allowed to appeal. That could go on another six months. If they do give the assurances, he can be immediately extradited on the 20th of May. Wow. So uh, it's it's all complicated. And, you know, this is what Freemasons like to do is is complicate, is make things so complicated. Like, look at any, any legal document or, or like 
the fine print of your bank account or something. You know, it's all designed to confuse you so that you 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 can't be bothered. And and I think that's what they're doing here is make it so confusing that people can't figure it out, and they're just mm. like whatever. But you know, the crux of it is the U.S. is still in control. Yeah, they can get whatever outcome they want. So if they want to uh, get Assange over to the U.S., put him on trial, you know, give him a 175 years prison sentence, and then upgrade the the sentence to a death penalty they can do all that mm. uh, they just have to go through that process um, so they're still in control and they can still uh, have any outcome that they want and so it's still uh, there's no you know the headlines today were like the free for a son's lifeline blah 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 but you know that's all uh, that's all the distortion but the reality is that they are still in control right so yeah that's what I kind of read today is that um, the U.S. has some new options, and you know it's still not being decided. Um, his fate is still up in the air, and yeah, really, wherever he ends up is gonna. He's already been through so much, you know. He's already damaged, and maybe he'll never recover from a lot of this. Um, you know, there was like I, I saw in a documentary. Uh, talks about assassination, poisoning his food, you know, things like that. After a while, I mean, I just put myself in that position. I'm going to be paranoid about eating my food. I'm going to be paranoid about going outside. Uh, I'm going to be paranoid about police brutality if, you know, you've gone against a system like this. And there's some people who don't understand what he's done. A lot of people because of all the deliberate uh, mis misinformation out there. Um, so, okay, I think, I think everybody's probably got a pretty good idea of the situation, um, but everybody should watch The Trustful to get a full picture of it, to see the footage that we've spoke about, to see the people talking about Julian and to really understand who this guy is and what he's done and what's going on and how unjust it is. And, you know, it's the last way we should treat these people. And unfortunately, people in power, a lot of people in power right now seem very sick, very sick in the head. Um, people are asking where to see it. Yeah, um, you can go to our website, thetrustful.org, for your local screenings. The film has gone incredibly well. It's surpassed everyone's expectations. We would have been happily happy if 20 cinemas in Australia showed it, but we've had over 200 so far. Whoa. It's still strong, uh, including epic, event. It is. Event That's Voice huge. and Billy. Um, very surprising that those big blockbuster mm. Hollywood orientated uh, chains would come on board, but we're so glad that they did. Uh, event just I'm shocked, hooked in honestly. Other, said. I, was, that, was that a surprise to you because... It's a taboo topic, you know, for they're going to, it's, it's the concern that if they show this movie, they'll be targeted in some way as well. There'll be some, some price for them to pay for getting a message like this out there. Yeah, like I can only guess that maybe on the board of selectors or, or even the board of shareholders of these cinemas that there are some supporters of Assange Must that have be. had enough with the politics in Australia. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, it's also about um, box office and it, the film's performed very well in the box yep. office on the standard of documentaries. And, awesome. uh, you know, and so we're, we're really pleased with it. It's also going really well in New Zealand and we've just released in the UK two weeks ago. It's going very well in the UK. Um, the big markets are still to come, the, the US and the, and the UK, uh, Europe. Um, we're going to take the film all around the world. It'll eventually go digital once the uh, cinema finishes, and um, we're going to keep showing it until it's free. That's our that's our commitment. Keep raising awareness until the public pressure gets big enough that the governments uh, take it seriously and do the right thing. Totally, man. We definitely raised mine and my wife's awareness today from one to one hundred and fifty. So well done. <laughs> Um, what about yourself, man? Were you concerned to create a documentary like this? I imagine it would have been kind of daunting because it's, um, 
you've seen already what happens to somebody who tries to get the truth out there um, with a message that makes government and things like that look bad. So how about yourself? Did you have any concerns? And also, did you have any experiences where something like that happened? Yeah, I definitely had concerns. As you say, this kind of fear mongering, this scapegoating of Assange it rubs off on any kind of journalism and documentary making is a form of journalism. Um, I just, like Assange, I just made the decision to take the risk and do mm. it anyway. And I, obviously what I've done is just pales in comparison to uh, the risk that Julian took and, you know, like a thousand to one. And so uh, I, I don't think it's anywhere near that risk and therefore hopefully I'll be fine. But, uh, you know, it, of course, the film contains actual classified information as well as documents and, that come up on the screen. And, you know, whenever there was that option to put them up or not, I just went, well, Julian did it. And, mm. you know, we only live once. And I, I don't want to live a life where I'm a coward, where I, I just sit back and, and don't say what I think and don't uh, stand up for anything. Um, you know, uh, so, so far so good. We, we expected that we might get hacked or something. Like I used, I warned each mm -hmm. of the editors, we hired the three different editors. I, before they signed on for it, I sort of said, you know, just so you're aware, this is highly political and um, your computer might get hacked. And, and they were all on board with that and it didn't happen. Mm -hmm. And I think that's because uh, there's an assumption that a documentary is normally um, pretty dry and serious and neutral and uh, and probably typically if, if the documentary maker covers this story they're actually helping that narrative to be spread that that scapegoating strategy uh, if they take that sort of neutral stance and it's not very emotive and it's not powerful and they just I don't think that the US were banking on this film being as as powerful, impactful, and that it would inspire people to take action, and that people would walk out of the cinema crying. I don't think yeah. they expected that. And I so didn't. it's flown under the right. No, you expect it to be dry. You expect it's a political documentary. It's about classified documents. You know, you expect. I'll. I, I saw it was two hours. Me, I'm. I'm interviewing you later in the day so I'm down to watch it but I was like oh two hours that's pretty long for any documentary any movie first getting someone to sit down let alone one that on a topic that might be kind of a lot of facts and data and but I was highly engaged the entire time right until the end and right yeah, I, yeah man it was so well done as I said it was just every line was interesting every line that was said in the documentary was interesting and fascinating and you were like just mind-blowing it was just a mind-blowing documentary man um, great to hear well you know we oh, so uh good. we we were very i was very cognizant of this thing that political documentaries are cold and dry and mm. i i'm so them i've only watched a handful of political documentaries um so you know when when natalia our co-producer and i sat down to conceptualize that we we actually were looking constantly for how can we make this engaging and you know, the animations, the motivational chapter at the end, the poetry is very unconventional. I don't, I don't know mm. if anyone's ever put poetry into a political documentary. I've, yeah. had a, I've had some criticism for that, but I don't care because it affects people. You know, the people yeah. that need to hear that have been moved by it. Um, and if that's what it takes to get some action on this, um, we're, we're happy to do it that way. Um, and, you know, and so it was, it was all geared towards um, getting a response. And, uh, yeah, I was surprised it got through Australian classification just very smoothly, got an mm. M rating, it could have got MA, it could have got R sure. and scared of all the reference, yep. but it didn't. And uh, so it's out there now, and I, I don't think they can stop it. Uh, in, in the US, they ironically have these free speech rules, so you don't even need classification for most states of the US. Um, so I, I think we can get it out there. Um, it's too late for them to prevent it getting out and, uh, and we can continue to raise awareness. Hell yeah, man. Well, I'm sure it'll just spread itself, you know? Um, I mean, obviously you guys have a big job to do, but it's going to be one of those documentaries for sure where, uh, especially in the US where it's such a big population and 
I think it's going to really reach the hearts and minds of a lot of people who maybe maybe there's a lot of people who are on the fence about the guy. Like, again, I don't know much what's, about the sort of public perception of him. Um, but I think, yeah, it's just such a convincing documentary. You told the story so well. And I think he'd be... Does he know about it? Like, you know, if this is... Yeah, he knows all about yeah. it. And he, I yeah. assume he hasn't been able to watch it. Might not even... Well, I can't answer that question for security reasons. Cool. All right. Well, yeah. I mean, that's awesome that he knows people are out here kicking goals for him, dude. And well, man... Yeah, I think oh, we get a lot yeah, of encouragement. Ahead. You know, um, yeah, Julian and his family are well aware of it. And his family think... also had... Put, they gave us a long list of changes and suggestions that we did accommodate um, almost all of them. And um, so, yeah, lots of support well, from everybody. And I'm sure Julian gets a big moral morale boost knowing that there's there's this collaboration that happened, that people like you and other influencers are helping get it getting it out there, um, and and just that thousands of people every day are watching this film and uh, perhaps understanding it for the first time and uh, and and waking up to it and and understanding this incredible uh, risk and courageous. Uh, gift that he that he's given to our understanding of the world okay so now in the spirit of julian and in the spirit of what you've done here i'm going to take a page out of both your book as well so earlier when you were talking you mentioned the freemasons that's what freemasons do they like to complicate things and make it challenging so that you feel confused and you can't really understand what's going on maybe you'd like to elaborate on what are you talking about there? Because I have I know a little bit about Freemasons. I have some understanding, perhaps, of um, some of their role in this world. But, I mean, you mentioned it. So maybe you would like to share your thoughts on, on what that's all about. I'm not an expert on, on that, that organization. But what I do know is that there's, um, you know, they have levels of... Uh, achievement with you know within within you know that, that people can strive towards like almost like cub scouts you know style and um you know from what i've heard that, that uh there are very highly intelligent people are, are members of the of that that group and uh they're in, they're all around the world they're in every um every corner of, of society and especially in politics especially in corporations CEOs and stuff and um, you know they they love to outsmart people they love to come up with Ponzi schemes like the monetary system and uh, you know and and it, even when you're traveling around Australia you see all their Freemasons and halls and yeah interesting. So I don't want to get into, too much into it because a lot of people they'll be alienated by this they'll be like the same with they'll the, get distracted it's, by this yeah They'll be yeah, like, yeah, hang on a second. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You lost me. That sounds like a conspiracy theory. Uh, now yeah. I will discredit your whole documentary. And that would yeah, be a yeah. massive they'll, shame. So they'll yeah. do that. And, yeah. and you know, and, and people need to just, just as with the Assange story, people need to give it the time. You can't understand these things in five minutes. The, mm. the information's out there. People need to spend hours and hours and hours um, going down these rabbit holes. And so, you know, I just <laughs> habitually throw in references and things. and Yeah, um, I was like, but, hmm, should I let that slide or should we expand on that a little bit? Yeah, but, you know, this is all out there and people can explore it and, um, and yeah. I encourage people to do so because, uh, and these are very dark corners of our society and the further you go into it, the darker it gets. So it's um, mm. not fun. You know, no. the, the good thing with the, with the Assange story, it is all out there on and... Uh, but even even this story is incredibly dark and harrowing when you see what they've done to this man. Yeah, uh, nice. It is torture. And as I said, I, I, I don't have any qualms of saying that these people responsible are psychopaths. You can't describe them any other way. Mm. That's not exaggeration. Yeah, they're wired um, differently that, for sure. They're very cold. They, they, uh, they just don't have a heart. They have no mm. compassion within mm. them to do these kinds of things. You know, to keep to keep a journalist in a six meter square cell for nearly five years in solitary, twenty two hours a day, it just it just is torture. That's all it is, and that's and they're trying to slowly murder somebody. Mm. 
Yeah, exactly. And it's, it's working. He's deteriorating um, quite severely from what I learned today in your documentary. So Tom Aspie is in the chat. That is my dad. And Tom, um, when I watched your documentary, when it was at one of the cinemas, him and mum went, he asked if you were worried about the US attitude towards you getting a visa to enter the States. Yeah, look, um, I'm not sure yet whether I'll even try to go there. Oh, okay. Let it do the rounds about you. I wouldn't feel safe to go to the US. Um, Good. I don't anyway, and I'm not you. I still don't feel safe to go there. Yeah, not even anyone's not safe. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's like, welcome to New If they York. do shit like not- that, yeah, yeah. If they do shit like that, you know, they're like, it's just out of control, man. So... I don't know. Yeah, I never wanted to go there yeah. anyway, so it's not a big loss. Nah, that's good. <laughs> All right, yeah, you kind of you kind of burned I'm that not, bridge. Not, it depends how <laughs> you know. It depends how how gutsy I feel. I might I might feel impelled to go, but cool. It doesn't okay. matter if I go or not because the film can yeah. go there. Exactly, dude. I mean, I I thought you might be in the film in a sort of Kip Anderson Kip Anderson vibe you interviewing people so i learned you did a documentary it's like oh kim did in this documentary you know and then all i saw was your name at the start and your name at the end and i think you read a part of some of the poetry but you weren't in there at all (laughs) so it was just like um you know you putting all these sort of expert voices together and telling the story um okay so i want to know what you think about the future for julian um, you know, do you think that there's some hope for this guy? What do you, what do you see going on? Yeah, I, I'm, I am an optimist. I believe in what we can achieve as a collective if we put our hearts and minds together. And so I wouldn't have made the film, I think, if, if I didn't think that we were capable of um, freeing him and... Uh, mm. You know, we did hope that he would watch the film from his living room, but it took nearly yeah. three years and he's still in the same place. It's, 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 it's just shocking. And, you know, a little so, square, uh, tiny little square without a window, just no sunlight. That is hell, bro. You can't, you can't that, even fathom it. That's hard for a week. That's hard yeah. for a week, let alone years. Yeah. With people who, pro- I don't know how they treat him, but you know, he's in maximum security prison. It's not a nice, not a nice situation in this. It's not a, yeah. it's not like a new building or anything believe, either. It looks like shit. I do believe that we can rise up and free him. I just think there needs to be a lot more awareness in order for the public pressure to get so great. Like it has to reach a critical mass and then this needs to become a key election issue in the next US election. That's a long way off. That's 5th of November. Um, I hope that we can free him before then, but it, it's it's just going to take the people to wake up, to, to take the time, you know, just watch one less fictional movie or one mm. less uh, Ghostbusters or Godzilla or whatever else at the cinema um, this month or this year, you know, and just just take a little bit of time because this is how they, this is how they manipulate us is through our time. We're, we're tied up doing our 40 hour a week job. We yeah. come home tired and we just, just want to tune out. And we got to do our taxes and shit. Yeah, or any any of all that stuff. All that stuff, uh, I'm free- doing it all the time, I feel like it never ends. You know, and, and so that people have to, if we don't put a little bit of time into finding out what's going on in the world, these atrocities continue, whether it's a, uh, uh, you know the torture of a journalist and he's just one of over 500 journalists in prison right now uh, that's just the canary in the coal mine and then you know animal treatment the, the degradation of the environment it goes on like if we don't address these things future generations are going to suffer even worse than we are 100 percent. yeah it's not going to get any better the more power that these people get um, the further we'll get from having a chance at stopping it before it's too far gone and no one has any chance of doing anything, you know? Like, it'll get to a point, most likely, where a documentary like this won't even be allowed. You just... It won't yeah. happen. And um, then what kind of world we're going to be living in? We're all going to be slaves. We're all going to be restricted. We're all going to be hating life. 
um, probably a lot more than we are now. Yeah, people got to get educated, man. They got to wake up and realize that this, they need to, they are part of making this world a better place. And we all need to come together and work on that because it's filthy. You know, it's so filthy and there's so much corruption at the highest level. And how else, how else to do it? You know, it's like, we have to do something. You create a documentary. Um, that guy did all that, you know, Julian did what he did, did so much. And, but yeah, then it comes down. Someone actually asked here, how can they help you? Um, you know, how can they help you in your documentary, Kim? And I'll let you be more specific, but I guess the best answer is just sharing the document, watch the documentary. Then you get educated. You can tell the story get people interested and like, you know, help people realize what kind of world we live in. But on top of that, um, sharing the documentary with people is there's going to be the fastest way to enlightening people on this issue. It's, it's two hours of facts, two hours of here's the story, you know? So after two hours of it, you're like, I get this pretty good now. Um, that's what is so good about the documentary. So I'm Karen here said over 500 journalists in jail. Wow. That's crazy yeah yeah it's um horrible it's so horrible like they're just telling the truth and they and we should be really helping them because they're doing it for all of us to live in a better world so you think that there's a chance for the guy um it sounds like things are really complicated and yeah they're trying to just drag it out to make things hell for him um yeah man that's i guess that's kind of where the situation is right now like that's where it's at it's an ongoing ongoing story after how many years like when was he when was he first put in house arrest uh 2010 right okay well, yeah fucking hell bro that's that's a lifetime in itself wow um so kim is there anything you want to add to the story or you know um you know send a message to the audience here right now anything like that yeah i just want to encourage people to see the film you know that's that's the best way to help. If you've seen it already, try to convince other people to see it. It's not easy to get people to watch a political film, um, but just urge them, tell them how important this is and, and that it doesn't, it's not just about the life of this man, but also it affects all of us. Um, people can also support the project on our GoFundMe page. You can search for that, the Trust or GoFundMe. Um, we're also seeking investors because it's, this big cinema run has not been really made possible through um, private investors that have come on board and generously support the project. Uh, that's what's helped us to push it out to millions of people in Australia um, through Facebook ads. And so, uh, wow. So you got, you got a lot of assistance from the general public or is some big, it was like a yep. lot of donations or some big investors a bit of yep. both? You know, this project was actually initially going to be a, a three month YouTube project, zero budget. And it, it only um, grew and grew and expanded mm -hmm. because of the support of crowdfunders. Wow. Uh, and, and so it was a, a beautiful thing that all of this collaboration, thousands of people helping to make it happen, and they continue to do so. And when we released the film to cinemas, we'd used up every cent that we had in the post-production to make sure that everything was licensed forever in perpetuity. It costed massive amounts. Um, and then we put it out organically and just sort of hope for the best. And we got some good turnouts initially in every city because people were so excited to, to see the film and, and Assange has so much support. Um, but then, you know, the attendance started to sort of drop and we're like, well, this is, we can't let this happen. We, we have to actually advertise because we've got to compete for eyeballs. Um, and that, you know, that's when we took on mm. uh, more investors to help us to push it out, to, to get it out into uh, people's, uh, onto people's. Facebook right homepage and yeah, um, and and it's been very effective that way, and that's why we had now almost a thousand cinema sessions. That's epic, dude. Cool, man. Well, I'm trying to think if there's anything else I want to discuss about this. Um, does anybody have any questions for Kim? Yeah, man. I don't know. I think you covered everything really well. Um, it's Dense topic, you know, you can yeah, you could talk all heavy, about yeah. it, and that's why the film is quite long and it doesn't even cover every topic we wanted mm. to. Um, but uh, yeah, if you watch the film, it's all very concise and 
um, it's, it's, it is a dense topic, but, but we lay it out very clearly. It's um, very organized. It's like, like a seminar, isn't it, almost, with the chapters and stuff. And, yeah. You know, so I think if people shouldn't feel daunted by seeing it, it's not going to be cold and dry. Um, it's actually a journey of understanding. So you're the one taking the journey through time uh, rather than through time. It's the journey of actually getting your head around it and um, getting off the fence on this issue. So, yeah, really urge people to take that time. That's exactly, yeah, that's what I think you've really nailed there because so many documentaries leave you a little bit on the fence and this definitely is not like that at all. Very enlightening and... Uh, very convincing. Karen said here, how are you holding up, Kim? Have you found this? I mean, Kim has been vegan for 12 years. This is a guy who is used to heavy topics being at the forefront of his life. He's not just a vegan. He's done so much activism and got so many people awakened to animal rights and the hell that animals go through. So Kim's already been doing the work um, that people don't want to do or think about and yeah man how are you how are you doing how's it been well thanks for asking i'm i'm fine you know the 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 editing was tedious it was a year sitting in front of the computer and driving an hour back and forth to to the editor's house and it was it was really challenging and and i was completely exhausted by the end but then it was as soon as it was released in cinemas i just started getting so excited and that and that energy is really picked me up and it, it actually showed me how a big part of your energy and your well-being comes from your mood, your your inspiration, like how, how motivated are you? Right. What's going on in you? It's not just your food and your sleep, you know, and so these days I'm working like up to 16 hours a day, seven days a week and I, <laughs> and I, I have so much energy because mm. I'm really motivated by what and excited by the, the opportunity to, to make a difference and to do this. And so, you know, that motivates me to get out of bed in the morning and, and stay up late and sometimes in the middle of the night doing interviews in the US and whatever. And yeah. uh, it's all fine, you know, and, and uh, I'm really motivated to just keep, keep getting this film out. Um, and uh, there's still a lot of challenges involved and there's frustrations and headaches, but, um, uh, you know, uh, all in all, like I'm, I'm just really pumped to, like keep keep fighting for this cause and, and just mm. let's just get free. Like that just keeps me wow. going. Wow, wow! Because you were very dedicated to the animal rights mission before, and it seems like that's sort of taken a back seat to something new now. You're very focused on this. Um, yeah, well, you know, you, I don't know if you caught this this bit of um, Kristen Raffinson's speech in the film, and then there's a lot to take in. But this particular line, he says. It was at the um, the beginning of the extradition trial in London. He did a speech, and his last sentence was, uh, "You won't be able to fight for any other cause. We're talking about the fundamentals." Right. And when I heard that, it actually hit me that how can we advocate for animals or the environment or indigenous people or anything if we don't have free speech, if we have ag gag law, you know? So uh, yeah, I I love advocating for animals and for veganism and the environment and stuff but uh, this has taken over everything mm. and once we've solved this issue i'll get back to that work for sure um, I'll, i might even try to juggle a little bit of it um in the next <laughs> <laughs> few months right. you know it's a pit um you know Hard the vea um, sydney vegan club became vea vegan education association and we still have our socials and um, and hopefully we'll get back to our, our, you know, screenings of Dominion, another excellent documentary very soon. Um, but yeah, for now, for now, I'm just sort of trying to advocate for free speech and the freedom of this uh, heroic journalist. Amazing. Um, I think it was interesting. You said you were, it was so tedious. You were tired. It was exhausting. Yeah, I imagine it was very hard. And then it's like, the movie came out and you got this new energy and excitement and everything. It was, it was, you know, you think you would need like a lot of rest after all that, but it sounds like it just gave you the recharge you needed to see, see it, all the progress that was made. And I hope that's what happens for Julian, man. You know, he's in such a bad way right now and probably just getting worse and worse, but maybe if they can get him out, um, 
maybe it'll be a fast turnaround back to uh, a healthy guy, I hope. And do you, yeah, do you know, I, sorry, go ahead. I, I, you know, when he does get free, and I, we are going to win this if we all unite on this, we will win mm-hmm. it. He just has to hang in there and survive through to when that freedom comes, when the doors wow. open. Um, but That's you know, when when that happens, uh, he'll need a lot of recuperation, and no one would ever expect him to work again. But if he feels motivated and he recuperates and he does get back to work, uh, you know, the world will benefit from his contribution. I um, I think you are so right on that one, bro. It seems like the world has already gained so much from what he's done and that is shown by the retaliation that has been done to him unfortunately do you, um it sounds like you don't really know then if after jail he has any you know i guess his plan is just to recover and um you know like get back to back to how with his family and shit like that it probably he's not thinking much more than that i don't know i think I think he would have plans because that would keep him motivated. I, I do. Mm. I have read somewhere that um, he wants to walk the Camino de Santiago with his father when when they get when when he gets out. Um, they want to visit Australia. Uh, you know, imagine all the things you'd you'd like to do after being um, <laughs> everything you know, kept in prison and or in the embassy for nearly you know for fourteen years, um, and you've missed yeah. out about a third of your life basically. Yeah. Um, so he'll have so much zest for life, and and just those simple things of like having a bush walk or walk or mm. just sitting on a beach, yeah. you you wouldn't even remember what those things are like. So um, it'll be just incredible when he gets free, and that's something that we all have to strive for. That is really fucked up. What has happened to this guy, bro? Um, yeah, but anyway, congratulations again, dude, on an incredible documentary and helping this dude out and i think what you said about this free if you don't have free speech how are you going to do anything this is like the core of fighting for all the other injustices in the world so i think you're making a really wise move in dedicating your efforts to this and obviously when you dedicate your efforts to something good things happen bro i've seen it since the day i met you and I'm seeing it again in this documentary, big time. So that's awesome, dude. I'm stoked you're on the job. Well, thanks very much, James. And, you know, good on you for taking some time and to, to look into this issue and, and uh, take it seriously and, and give some time to it. For sure, bro. Yeah, the dude's doing it for us, man. It's the least we can do is talk about what they're doing to him and what he's done for us. All right, brother. Well, I guess that is a pretty good start for the people in the chat or a bit of an update and reminder and now you guys all have a documentary you can watch and share with people and i you know for all the reasons already explained we highly encourage you to check this out and get more educated on this and fight for the freedom of a journalist who exposed corruption and is being punished for it so thanks heaps kim thanks so much for joining us man uh it's been It's been shocking and enlightening, but overall very good to learn about all this. And maybe we'll talk to you again, um, you know, if if some more updates happen in the future or, you know, you can talk again about the success of your film. We can talk a bit more or maybe even when you, um, I don't know. I don't know what we can do, but, you know, let's leave the invitation on the table and any time just let us know when you want to come back and chat more to the people. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Awesome, brother. Well... Yeah, it's good to catch up with you, man. Keep up the amazing work and stay in touch. Cheers. Thanks, James. Okay, thanks, bro. <clears throat> Kim Staten. Whoa. What a what a gangster. What a gangster. That dude's doing that must be scary to make a documentary like that. You know he's exposing government corruption at the highest level war crimes and shit the dude who did it has been in prison for 14 years and now Kim makes a whole documentary about this guy that is courageous that's a good guy right there man if you guys watch this documentary you guys are going to have your heads blown far out 
<clears throat> All right, well, I was just going to do a short stream tonight. And how long was that? An hour, an hour 20. So, yeah, guys, I think I'm going to pretty much bounce and leave you with that to think about. Maybe do some... Um, you know, I put a link in for the GoFundMe for his documentary if you want to contribute to the cause. And, um, and yeah, I put the website as well for the documentary, which is The Trust Fall. We didn't even talk about the name of the documentary. I'm going to... I hope I'm not giving it away that it's something that shouldn't be given away. But I think it is a good thing to mention just lastly a very good finish so the trust fall we all know what a trust fall is it's when someone stands with their back to you and then they just close their eyes fall backwards and they are caught by the person they're supposed to be trusting all right so that's the trust fall and the trust fall regarding this documentary and julian assange is that he did what he did he put himself on the line. He put his freedom on the line. He put his safety on the line. He put his life on the line. And it is up to all of us to catch this guy in the trust fall. Right? So he, he did what he did. He's like, I'm going to put all this out there. I'm going to take these risks. I know where I could end up. And I'm just going to trust that the right people, that the people catch me before hitting the ground, you know? So it sounds like there's a lot of people on the job looking after this guy and, I mean, not looking after this guy necessarily, but trying to um, help him. Add the links to the description. Yes, Alison, I will do that once the stream is over for show. Sure. You know what time it is. Oh, Good to see you back shit. in that Oh, shit. All right. Let's not play here. Full 20. So... Zanny, thank you so much, mate. You know what time it is. Now, I still don't know the terms on YouTube, but bear with me one second. Full 20. Dude, that's the best. I tell you, this streaming life is good. Thanks, Zanny, for the 420 tip. You absolute legend. We all need a little bit of 420 after learning about the Julian Assange story. That is literally the first thing I did after I learned. I was like, okay, I need to blaze that shit. That was fucked up. <sighs> all right. Thanks for that. I feel a little bit better already. Um, anything else to talk about with this guy? Oh, yeah. No, I talked about the trust fall. I talked about the trust fall. All right, guys. So that's, that's it for tonight. Um, thanks thanks again for the people who donated Julie and Zenny absolute champions keeping the lights and the camera on really appreciate it and yeah guys I will catch you all very soon again I'm a streamer now so I'll probably see you tomorrow peace